Yo, this is Uncle AK. I'm Reflex. Yo, yo, welcome to Stuck on the Podcast. Yeah, man, I miss this desk, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> Remind us again what you've been doing. I lately? just, I just been chilling, man. You know what I'm saying? Just, uh, you know, just been, uh, you know, on the on the D low. <laughs> just been chilling. So I guess it's a special episode, huh? This is a special episode, man. This is uh, we are recorded on a Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I'm just gonna put that out there. But yeah, it's a special episode because I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm like Terminator. I'm back. Saying that. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is you're very skinny and he was he had muscles. Yeah, man. When I you said when I left, I had muscles. No, I said the only difference is you're very skinny and he had muscles. Oh, the Terminator. Yeah. You know they're doing another, anyway. Yeah, they're doing another one. But hey, listen, this is Stuck in Riddle Podcast. Appreciate y'all checking us out. Uh, we are weekly uh, digital show. Sponsored by Perfect Office Solution. This particular episode is sponsored by Perfect Office Solution. If you need office space and you're in the DMV area, hit them up. Let them know we sent you. Use promo code SITM Podcast. You get 10% off your monthly lease. They provide professional, flexible, and affordable private office spaces for entrepreneurs in the DMV area. Again, that's promo code SITM Podcast. You get 10% off. Okay, let them know where we are online, where they can find us, and all that <coughs> good stuff, bro. Yes, yeah, sir. So, um, yeah, I could. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's um, SITM Podcast. Just type in SITM Podcast or YouTube.com slash SITM Podcast on all social platforms at SITM Podcast. And email us, please email us, um, SITM Podcast 237 at gmail.com for questions, comments, referrals. Uh, we're currently um, accepting questions for our couch talk. So uh, if you have a topic and you would like for us to you know talk about it, definitely hit us up with that. You know, we appreciate it. Yeah, man. Hey, listen, I'm excited about this episode, you know, because. You know, the guest hit us up, like you just said. Yep. Um, it's a guy that I've known for a minute, you know what I mean? He supports, mm-hmm. he's, you know, been commenting, watching the episodes, both the uh, interviews and the couch talk. And, uh, man, listen, we got Saul Levy in the building. He is a uh, Splunk Sock Architect and co-founder of Open Path LLC, a for-profit business focused on in the area of government and commercial contracting acquisitions, both prime and subcontracting. Please, 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 again, welcome Saul Levy to Stuck in the Middle Podcast, bro. How you feeling, man? Feeling good, man. Thank hey. you guys for having me on here. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. How, first of all, I want you to tell the people how you found out about this episode, this 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 digital show that we do here. Yeah, man. So uh, I got a friend named uh, Rashida, mm-hmm. and uh, Shut we, up. we both went to um, Salisbury University. And when I was in grad school, um, I was basically uh, the uh, advisor mm-hmm. uh, for ASA. Um, so I saw that, you know... She posted this episode where she's on, and I like to support, you know, uh, folks that I know back then. You know, I like to see people doing good. So when mm-hmm. I saw that, I was like, oh, this is exciting. And then I knew you were on there, too. Yeah, I was man. like, oh, this is nice. This yeah, is nice. Yeah. So as I watched it, I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I kept watching more and more episodes and stuff like that and um, got a lot of nuggets from watching those episodes. So I was like, let me hit them up and see, uh, you know, if they would be willing to kind of talk with me. And uh, I can share some of the things that not only I do, but that we're trying to do and, you know, try to put some of our things out there. Yeah. yeah. You from Sierra Leone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Born and bred? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me say born. <laughs> <laughs> I say bred, man. I don't lost all my, my accent, man. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. yeah. But um, Reflex mentioned in the intro about Splunk, you know what I mean? Like, you're the Splunk guru. You're the Splunk person to go to. And I want to start it off this way, right? You mentioned uh, my desire was to initially... My desire was initially to go back one day and become a, a leading CIO of the country in the area of information security. Mm-hmm. Now, in now I may want to do more. Like, exp, you know, speak a little bit about that. And this is in Sierra Leone, so yeah. speak a little bit about that. Uh, so, a little history, I guess, about Sierra Leone. So, you know, we went through a series of, you know, issues um, that have been plaguing the country. Not only from the Civil War to mudslide to Ebola, um, it's, it's just been a lot of issues that we've been going through. Um, so, um, infrastructure-wise for IT, that's not really a priority. You mm-hmm. know, feeding the people, making sure healthcare, some of the other basic needs that you know a lot of times first world countries we take for granted, that's their priority. Um, so, the idea initially was, all right, I'm you know I'm pretty decent at IT, so this would be great to translate to Sierra Leone. But as I kept looking at um, where they're at now and kind of where they need to be, the focus wasn't necessarily just, you know, IT is just more so where can I fit in and how can I assist? Um, and we recently got a, um, I forget what the guy's name is. Well, not his name, but his title. But um, he's the director of um, uh, science and technology innovation in the in country. Sierra Leone. Yeah, in Sierra Leone, uh, Dr. Senge. He's an MIT guy, really, really smart guy. And he's bringing a lot of resources. You know, he's bringing a lot of attention. Uh, to the country. 
So um, as I see that he's doing some great things there, my hope is just to be able to assist in whatever you know, shape or fashion that they need me to assist with. Um, so um, I've been reaching out, you know, doing some of the things I've been able to do with Splunk and, you know, other applications that I, that I work with and to say, hey, how can I assist? And, um, you know, if ends up being I'm a CIO, great. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I end up being a director of, you know, food and services, yeah. you know, it is what it is, <laughs> yeah. man. You know, I just, uh, I want to try to help as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, you know, I'm not in the position yet to transition just because, you know, um, I have a family here, you know, mm -hmm. you know, still got young kids and infrastructure wise with, you know, healthcare and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's just, it's much better in America, education and stuff like that as well. Right, it's right. a little better here. So until they get there, you know, I got to think of my family as well. Yeah, so, man. You, you know, so we, I want, I want to get back a little bit and unpack you as a person for those who may not know you. Sure. Um, so who is Saul Levy for somebody who just met you for the first time right now? Okay. Uh, Sar Levy is a Sierra Leone born <laughs> boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Salon. Uh, <laughs> Salon I was born. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was born in uh, Kono, um, <clears throat> and I basically left really early. Um, I, I moved throughout when I was young throughout the country. Um, I moved to Calabar Town, which is another area in Sierra Leone. Moved to Gambia for a little bit, and then back again Sierra Leone. And my dad got me from the u.s mm -hmm. and then from here um he was in the military so i basically had to you know move all around with him you know mm -hmm. do the whole military life Fact, yeah. um and i went to school at university of maryland for undergrad I actually did kinesiology and then i did um grad school i did cardiopulmonary so the whole goal was initially to become a physical therapist slash you know uh, doctor at some point in time um, but as i was going through that um, I realized that I'm paying a lot of <laughs> loans to try to get, you know, to this status or to this level. Mm -hmm. Um, so to me, it just didn't make sense at all. Yeah. Um, so I just decided, all right, let me do something that actually makes sense. It's feasible. And not only that, something I'm good at. Um, so, um, married, um, uh, with, uh, a wife and two kids. My wife is Tierra Levy. Uh, we married in 2013, going on five years now. I got a young daughter named Mackenzie. She's two years old. Mm -hmm. And I got mm -hmm. another young one named Ami. Um, she's uh, about to be four months. Yeah. So Shout out to you, man. Two beautiful young daughters, man. Yeah, man. You love only do. Love them. <laughs> you mentioned um, something, kines kinesiology. Yeah. What kinesi is that? Um, basically, it's like the study of movement. That's that's essentially what it is. You know, you just study like movement. Um, so it's, I was literally headed to the, to the healthcare track, and mm -hmm. you guys had many, you know, Africans on this podcast mm -hmm. before. Where the, you know, you got that forte of where you should be, right. you know, a doctor, engineer, <laughs> yeah. lawyer, lawyer, yeah. well, disgrace yeah. family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything like, else, you're disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was uh, trying to head to you know through one of those tracks, and then of course the doctor being the I guess the most renowned or prestigious mm -hmm. um, in my country at least. Um, so. Uh, I I didn't find any interest in it, you know. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. so you know, I was gonna mm -hmm. say before, you know, and you, you probably want to get into how mm -hmm. he found his love right, for right, like right, cyber. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say, um, how did you transit from healthcare to uh, technology? Great question, man. Um, so when I graduated from grad school, um, I went to work initially at a. Um, at the hospital, Holy Cross Hospital. I was working as an exercise physiologist. Big, big job like this, and you leave. <laughs> <laughs> you would think, right? <laughs> so, um, I mean, they were paying. And again, it's not necessarily about the pay, but, you know, with the amount of loans I had, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> a lot had to do with the pay. Mm -hmm. So um, they were paying 22 an hour, and, you know, I looked at where I had to be, and then knowing that, you know, the number of loans I had, I had taken out, and I had to pay back and knowing the kind of lifestyle I want to set for my family. Mm -hmm. I was like, this, you know, this, I need to find something different. So in that journey to try to find something that kind of, you know, uh, fits uh, something I'm good at and something mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily need me to go back to school. Um, I discovered a school um, uh, uh, that was in um, Bowie called Epiture. They were teaching, you know, um, Linux and uh, other applications and things like that. So I went to the school, um, and um, actually, I should rewind back just a little bit. I had exposure to IT prior to that. So I used to build websites. I used to build, like, um, little small stuff, you know, kind of if you know 
computer in your family, especially an African family, mm-hmm. you're that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sabi know, computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, as I was um, building these things, I didn't necessarily think of it as an IT. I don't know why, but I didn't think of it that way. I was just thinking, okay, this is um, this is something that uh, I'm good at and I like doing. Mm. Um, so as I kept doing it, I learned that um, you know you could actually make money in doing things like this. Um, so I wanted to specialize in something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into Linux initially, and I was pretty decent in Linux. Um, I did an internship with a, a friend of mine who had a company. Uh, shout out to Yanu. Um, he owns a company called Tomva World. Uh, he's an AI machine learning guy, and he kind of just gave me some ropes in terms of what to kind of intern in. And then um, I had a couple of friends that um, were teaching me um, some other applications and I just fell in love with Splunk just because of everything that you can do with mm-hmm. with, with it, and we can talk more about you know what what Splunk exact you know what it is exactly. Yeah, man, it's another um, whole different beast in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's honestly just how I transitioned to it. I mean, um, I got a uh, job offer shortly after that from Tech Systems was my first like Splunk gig, actually working for Splunk. So that was just huge, man. And I after I just started taking all the certifications and things like that, and uh, that's how I got in. Yeah, there's a key thing that you mentioned in that, and is all my friends, you know, were teaching me, you know, these applications. We're talking about it. Speak a little bit about this collaboration. You know, yeah. how important it is for people to, you know, aid others, help others, you know, mm-hmm. through their yeah. journey. Yeah. And just to add on to that, you one of the things that I also respect about you is the the group me group that we have. I don't know how I got into that group, but are you the administrator of that group? Yeah. Yeah, and that, you know that's a collaborative tool as well. So yeah, just uh, yeah. So, I mean, even before like the IT realm, I always saw that um, folks that actually succeed receive a lot of help. You know, no one's an island, no man's an island, and no one just kind of just up and springs up, you know, from nowhere by themselves doing you know everything by themselves. At some point in time, you got help from somebody. Yeah. Regardless of how small you think that help is, you got help from somebody. Facts. Um, so, as I was seeing that, um, what my well, as I was picturing what my goal was and what I wanted to do. Um, I started looking for folks who are already doing it. You know, watch how to reinvent the wheel and struggle mm-hmm. through the things that other people already struggle through. You know, um, so I started asking a bunch of my friends who own businesses or IT businesses who um, were doing IT work, whether nonprofit sector, federal sector, just you know, general commercial sector. I just asked them, "Hey, man, you know, I'm trying to get into IT. What, uh, what should I do? What should I study?" And everybody had like their own, you know, different opinions and whatnot. So I just took, you know, the nuggets from. Um, at least that I can chew on from individuals and then the stuff that you know I can kind of cast aside I did um, and as I was asking these folks what to do um, I started you know picking and choosing exactly what I wanted to do as you guys already know IT is a you know is a vast field in terms yeah. of different yeah. specialities that you can you know you can do um, I know I didn't want to do networking <laughs> that was for sure I know I wanted to do something that dealt with uh, applications and something that just um, was easy to kind of integrate with anything and some of that made sense for people. Um, so I understood what Linux was. I understood that Linux, you know, is a um, operating system that you know is pretty much used universally, you know, for the last 20, 30 years or forty years. Um, so I started trying to build off of that. Um, and as I was building off of that, um, it kind of you know flowed through Splunk, and uh, I just met a bunch of people who were just willing to pour into me. And mm-hmm. I just I just soaked it up. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you're also dabbling into AWS, Amazon Web Services as well? Yeah. yeah. As, as far as with your company or something that you do in your day-to-day? So both. Um, so um, our website, our pro- production website is hosted on AWS. Um, once I got into AWS, I just started seeing just like the possibilities with it. Um, the ability to scale, the ability to do like a, a bunch of different things and do it much faster, of course, than on-prem, but not only that, but... Uh, much easier than in other um, cloud platforms. I'm not a fan of Azure. You know, no shade on them. I'm just, yeah. I, just <laughs> I just prefer AWS versus yeah, yeah. like all the other uh, cloud yeah. platforms. Yeah. yeah. While we while, while we're still on tech, sorry, bro. Um, mm, go ahead. Ahead. While we're still on tech, you know, I want I want to also get into like your love for serial and everything. But while we're already on this world on tech, I don't know mm-hmm. if I'm jumping too too far ahead. I want to talk open um, open path LLC, your company. Yeah. You know, this joint venture with your with your fi- with your wife. Before we touch yeah. on that, right mm-hmm. and. The, what I'm about to say is just a you know bridge to that. Okay. Um, you've been mentioning Splunk, Splunk a lot, you know, and some people watching right now may be thinking to themselves, "What is Splunk?" Sure. You know, what I mean, uh, we hear of uh, you know cybersecurity, we mm-hmm. hear of Scrum, we hear of um, AWS. Yeah. I mean, you don't really 
see an average Joe who talks about y'all must plunk analyst. Yeah, a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, please uh, give us, you know, an overview of what Splunk is, the importance of it, yeah. you know, how useful it is in today's society. Sure, man. Um, so in general, an easy way to kind of classify Splunk is basically like the Google of um, IT data or just digital data in itself. So it allows you to pretty much ingest a bunch of different things and just make sense out of it. That's essentially what it is. It's like a big aggregator that just sucks up information and just spits it out in a you know easy fashion for you to read and digest. Um, so imagine you have let's say you know um, six hundred million rows of you know CSV lines, you know an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. you, you're not trying to read all of that, right. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And imagine that's constantly updating. So you can mm -hmm. have Splunk ingest that or basically read and monitor that file as it continues to you know append the data appends to it. So you can see the, you know the trends and you can do different types of calculations and analytics behind it. It just makes, you know, things make sense. And that's essentially what Splunk does. Most people use it in the security setting, but that's not the only setting. I mean, you can use it in terms of product overview, uh, inventory. Uh, you can use it to track IDs, user activity. Um, you can use it to uh, analyze, you know, uh, geospatial data. No. Um, one of my friends, uh, they actually use it to see how the ice has been melting for the last like 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's it's so creative. Endless you know? possibility, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. And you're also doing something dope recently. You know, you're actually doing, the, I want to call it online tutorial videos, you know, showing people like what you do with Splunk as well. I saw yeah. one you do, you do on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the one uh, you know, I kind of mentioned earlier with um, Dr. Senge, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, director of uh, uh, information technology in, in Sierra Leone. Um, basically, I was just showing him like, we have a tool here. As long as I have the data, mm -hmm. I can make sense of it for you. So you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to find, you know, different creative tools or even creating your own tool to right. do that. Why invent the wheel when you have somebody that can do that for you? Mm -hmm. um, but not only me, I have a bunch of the Sierra Leone mm -hmm. engineers, you know, hopefully at some point in time we can touch on that here that I, you know, collaborate with that are very skilled in, you know, different areas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, utilize what you have and we can, you know, assist and, you know, make the country better. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Open Path LLC. Mm -hmm. yeah, this joint venture with your wifey, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Power yeah. couple. <laughs> you will conquer. You know, what's, what's the idea behind it? What's the mission? So Open Path LLC, it's literally, um, it's it was tailored towards IT. Mm. But in terms of IT, we understood that there's so many different paths within IT. So that's essentially what it is, is Open Path, where you can find your path within the IT space. It doesn't necessarily have to be Splunk, AWS, or cloud engineer, security engineer. There's so many different fields that you can, you know, follow. So my idea was just basically to get a group of engineers together to be able to work and find out what fits best for this individual, train them, and mm -hmm. then help them out in whatever way. Um, so that was initially the, you know, the, you know, the premise behind building Open Path. Um, and as we continue to develop, we understood that we had to specialize. So me being a Splunk engineer, AWS guy, so that's what I started specializing in. But um, I have a bunch of other partners who specialize in Oracle, you know, um, just general Linux. Mm -hmm. um, some folks with Scrum actually hit up uh, uh, Kate. Kate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, as I listen to other folks who are doing similar things, but maybe you know in a different setting, I try to grab onto that and then you know help <clears throat> individuals connect. You know. Yeah. Look, so. let me just put this out there right now. Yeah. Public service announcement, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just hearing you and Flex conversation, you know, earlier before we started recording, you know, I could pick up, you know, um, some episodes you've watched here. You know, I could pick up, you know, little yeah. nuggets like, yo, okay, I watch that. It's invested. Yeah. It's, yeah, and I'm about to go hit up that person. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that person is doing this. Let me go hit them up because mm -hmm. this is value to me too. Yeah. And this is the importance of stuck in the middle. I'm not trying to, you know, brag or anything. But I'm just simply saying that. You know, like for, like for example, after this, we're definitely talking technology. Fact. You feel me? So this is the importance of this, and and you know, I I, I encourage you know the viewers and watchers those into technology. You know, what I mean, I'm pretty sure you are open, you know, to helping other folks out there who want to emerge in this field of technology. But yeah, that's my own little run, man. But nah, yeah, man, it's it's, it's 100. You know, it's like he's invested. It's that networking thing. You yeah, know what I mean, whether it's technology or you know, Ankara or fashion or whatever mm -hmm. have you. That's why they, you know. So one thing that somebody said in one of the videos earlier is the diversity of guests. You know what I mean? You can, you can, and that's why we we label the title so you know what you're looking for. Don't go pick and choose. Watch everything. But you know, say network anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what role do do you play, and what role does your wife play? You know, for this joint venture to continue, yeah. you know, prospering. Sure. Um. So. 
my wife's role is uh, essentially CEO. So, <laughs> you know, she has, the <laughs> <laughs> she has the vision. She understands like, you know, what needs to be done. And she's um, very much more structured than I am. Me, sometimes I'm all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of things going on. You know, we can talk about that later, but I have a lot of different things going on. And my wife is just like, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? And she's that person that just, she guides me, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, she uh, makes sure that, you know, business registered, makes sure that, you know, opportunities wise that um, I'm hitting up those opportunities and making sure I'm following through with those. And uh, if there are other points of collaboration, sometimes I bring it to her. And, you know, women sometimes think differently than men. Mm -hmm. So she gives me ideas and, you know, spins up thoughts in my head that I would have never thought of. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of what she's been doing. And then my role is I'm the CIO. Um, and it's just the title, but essentially um, I work with a bunch of different technologies. Um, so I try to do my best to incorporate those technologies in what we do. Mm -hmm. So even our production site is on AWS. We use a Splunk. Um, we use Linux. Um, we use a bunch of other open source tools as well. Um, Duo. Um, uh I'm forgetting like a bunch of the other ones that we have, but basically we use everything that we teach our students to use um, so that they understand that, you know, even if you don't use it with us, there's stuff that you can do on your own and you can build. And that's essentially to me what um, the premise of IT is, right. you know, implement this on your own, learn, grow and tell those stories. And that's how you become better at it. So. Very important question. And I'm just going over, you know, I'm going rogue right now. Yeah. A lot of students, you know, go to school. Um, some of them, don't know the importance of internships. Heck, I did not know the importance of internship. I didn't even take, I didn't even do one. You know what I mean? Um, once they leave school, they get, you know, they start looking for jobs. They can't find jobs because one, they do internships. Two, they don't have the experience and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, speak a little, a little bit about the importance of internships, for one, and how do people maneuver the way around experience? I mean, heck, we still got to get experience some, somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So just speak a little bit about that. All right. Um, so first of all, just so people can know, people who are interested in IT, just so that you know that some of these jobs that ask for like 10, 15 years of experience, that's a lie. 90% <laughs> of those jobs don't require that. It's just a way to kind of, you know, um, weed out the folks who aren't really interested or folks who aren't willing to challenge themselves. So that was the first thing. Um, when it came to getting um, into IT, my biggest thing was I need to understand what the heck I'm getting into. Um, the money's great and all of that other stuff, but I think for me, learning and growing in my field, the money will come. You know, it's just uh, just like any other um, uh, any other uh, you know field. If you are really good at what you're doing, people are gonna come to you. People are gonna seek out your skills, and it's the same thing with IT. So I wanted to really learn and grow and become you know the best engineer I could be. You know, I'm still learning and growing and developing, but. Um, within the last four or five years, you know, I've really developed myself um, into, uh, I would say, a pretty decent engineer. Um, and in terms of uh, the role of internship and what it played, it helped me understand just uh, a general overview of um, systems, architecture, networking, things like that. Uh, not necessarily the technical portion, just understanding why we do certain mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and how things communicate and why things should communicate. Right. So. Understanding that bit um, gave me more of a, um, a guideline into understanding uh, how to study, when to study, and what to look for. And uh, it, it made it a lot easier because IT is so broad. If you just jump out there, honestly, you, you can get, you know, in the weeds very quickly, man. <clears throat> well, define for, you know, for us and for the viewers what, you know, uh, Open Path LLC is as far as government contracting company, what exactly that means. Sure, sure. Um, so what we do is we subcontract work from uh, prime um, contractors. So you have the prime and the subprime. It's typically the folks who literally get all the money. Mm -hmm. And if they can perform the work, hey, then, you know, more proud to them. If they can't, which typically is the case, they hand it out to sub subcontractors. So you see like a Deloitte, Booz Allen, you know, SAIC, all those guys. They get like the million dollars, billion dollar contracts. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times within those contracts, there's stipulations to hand out a certain percentage of those proceeds to um, small businesses, veteran owned businesses, minority uh, businesses and whatnot. Um, and that's where we come in. Say, hey, we're a minority business that specializes in Splunk. We're a minority business that specializes with AWS. You guys need to um, launch X, Y, and Z. We can do that for you. Um, so even if it's, you know, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollar contract, we're willing to take that. 
Uh, and to many of us, you know, that sounds like a lot of money, but to them, that's like that to us, you know, very easily just so they can meet that mandate so yeah. they can, you know, keep the contract. Imagine collecting five, six of those or my five, ten of those. That's already a million. Yep. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's thinking. all about the hustle, you know, <laughs> thinking about the money, man. Yeah. But now, nah, um, Open Path, you got the training and you also have internships. Um, how can people, you know, connect for those internships and how does that happen? And also the trainings as well. Yeah. So the training, I'll be honest, the training, I kind of scale back on a bit um, just because I, I do a lot on my own. Mm -hmm. um, I do have I do collaborate with a bunch of engineers, uh, Splunk engineers. So right now we're trying to revamp the, the training process. Um, in the past, what we would do is basically um, have students log on to WebEx or Zoom sessions and it will be live training online. Uh, we don't have a you know brick and mortar location. Uh, we find it's more productive to do it online, where we can reach you know the masses. Um, and we used to do I th think the last semester I had like around ten students, and then this semester I'm only taking three. Um, but what I want to do is be able to kind of refine the routine or the curriculum rather, so that the processes you know could be much easier to follow through. It used to be a, a three month course. Uh, where students would, you know, kind of learn the basics of Linux and then go into Splunk. But I found that that was, you know, too short of a time because it was just overload. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of boot camps or those, you know, quick training programs that just, you know, you get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So I spread it out to six months so that, you know, people could really learn exactly what they're doing, know the process in itself. And, you know, if you have questions, um, you can definitely ask those questions. Um, but the training portion, uh, we just started one. Um, this past Monday, actually, um, again, like I said, I have three students right now. Um, that's from typically six thirty to eight thirty. Um, this session, I'm actually doing eight thirty to to ten thirty, um, but I try to keep it as close as possible, you know, to you know lighter hours, so it can kind of make sense. Um, internship wise, though, what we do is um, we offer um, internship through AWS and then also through. Um, Splunk, so essentially be building reports, dashboards, spinning up servers and things like that, and then doing some data analysis. Paid. Yep. So paid internship. Huh? Paid internship. No, it's it's unpaid. Okay. I'm sorry. It's yeah, come on, get the experience. Come on, okay. get it. <laughs> <laughs> you need the experience. Come on, get it. I so, want I wanted to ask you a a, a question here. Yeah. You know, most people glory. I don't get a government job. I got a government job. You know, what I'm saying like I work for the federal government and. Mm -hmm. um some of the people, folks, you know, saying like uh, glory in, you know, being a contractor. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe because they want to maneuver uh, quicker and easier. Yeah. I don't know what your experience is, is as far as like being a government worker or contractor. Speak about the differences and like what the benefits are. Yeah, I've, I've been a contractor pretty much my whole life. I, I prefer contracting. Um, government work, it's great and all. If, you, if you're looking, it depends on what you're looking for, right? So if you're looking for stability, you know, government all the way, mm -hmm. uh, especially with IT. Um, mm -hmm. But... If you're looking to make more money and you're able to have more freedom, contracting to me is where it's at. Um, I mean, you can pretty much set your rate. Um, you can set your schedule somewhat. Um, like right now, I'm you know completely remote, so you know I can. I traveled to Sierra Leone about three months ago, so I was working from Sierra Leone for about a month. Um, you know, doing the same thing, getting paid, you know, money here working in Sierra Leone. So. Um, Things like that is what I appreciate. You know, mm -hmm. if I wanted to take my family to, you know, uh, Jamaica and work out of Jamaica for like two weeks, you know, I can do that. If I wanted to go to, you know, um, uh, Cabo or, or wherever, I, you know, I can do that anytime I want because, you know, I'm, I'm free to do that. Uh, whereas with federal work, you, you really don't get that. Now, with that being said, the benefits of federal, you know, it's the retirements and just the other benefits mm -hmm. that they, they offer. So you got to strategize how you're going to make up for that. So that's why open path, that's where it comes in. It's mm -hmm. it's sort of our retirement path. So if we are able to develop different businesses um, and invest wisely, we don't need to worry about 401k and things like that. You know, our business will be making passive income right. in itself. So there's no no point in Major you know, yeah. making money work for you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's dope. Now, still speaking of the federal government, you know, 45 being in power right now, mm -hmm. and, you know, you see, like, a shift in the whole clearance system, you know what I mean? It's a lot difficult to get yeah. clearance and stuff. Um, I don't know what your experience is with that, but speak a little bit about, you know, give a little advice to the youth, you know, growing up right now. You see a lot of um, youth who go to school to want to um, end up working for the federal government. They, don't, they really don't know how hard it is to get a clearance. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Uh, what advice do you have for them in terms of just leaving a straight path, leaving a straight path in order to you know, acquire? Yeah. Acquire. <laughs> so <laughs> here comes the plug in for military. <laughs> so I'm a reservist um, in the military. And um, one of the greatest benefits or assets um, that you can gain from the military is the clearance itself. Um, so I worked with, a, I was stationed with the MI unit and that's how I initially got my first clearance and, um, uh, MI military intelligence unit. Um, so through that, um, I'm able to utilize my clearance, not only on the military side, but also on the civilian side. Um, so depending on, you know, what track you're trying to, you know, chase, I think the military is a great option. Um, I know folks aren't really necessarily divested into that, even with, you know, 45 being in power, <laughs> the, um, the focus right now, what especially you, what are when, you guys saying? Forty-five in power. Uh, <laughs> President Trump. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, even if President Trump <laughs> is in power, regardless, when you're a cyber guy, you focus on cyber stuff. Like even if like war were to break out, you're not going there holding guns and st- mostly you'll be dealing with cyber related things. You know, cyber warfare is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, you can cripple a whole city, you can cripple Fuck. a whole nations. You know, with with cyber warfare, so that's mm-hmm. bigger than anything. So for folks who are trying to get into cyber, don't worry about the guns and things like that. Worry about your knowledge to be able to bring that up to assist the country, and you'll you'll definitely get paid handsomely for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and clearance wise, you can easily get that clearance with it um if you don't want to go the military route um getting getting into cyber is still good because a lot of uh companies sponsor you just because you're getting into that uh that role um so like the blues island saic um you know uh what, what's the, what's the other big ones that they got out there um Deloitte, Deloitte, yeah. all those uh, guys. Accenture, yeah, yeah Accenture, yeah, all those guys, man. They uh, they get a certain. Um, Lidos, yeah, Lidos, yeah. Lidos, <laughs> Lidos pizza. <laughs> uh, like all those guys, pretty much, they get a um, and I don't know necessarily the inner workings of it, but they get a certain amount of people that the government allows for them to clear. Mm-hmm. So because of that, you know, a lot of that gets thrust into folks that are going yeah. into the cyber related field. Yeah. Red, red, red. You know, it's in like. Uh, statement just to answer your question if you know you know not looking to get into military man just you know as a young and coming up better financial decisions man you know hang around the wrong crowd the right crowd just keep your nose clean man and because you, you never know what you want to do in the future as far as like you know they're going to look into all those things so just you know you know have fun play hard but you know keep your nose clean and make you know better decisions that way you put you set yourself up for uh, you know a uh, better future yeah, in, your, in your family. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you this. What are the, you know, saying like risks, if any, associated with being a federal uh, government uh, contracting agency? Um, I mean, you can lose the contract. Uh, that's a big one. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you lose the, the contract, then, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But the thing is, once you sign an MOU, um, a memorandum of understanding, essentially, that, that's it. You locked in. So if the, um, depending on the terms that you sign on for it, um, you just got to be careful. If you sign on for something that says, hey, we can cut this at any time, then, you know, that's kind of what you got to deal with. Um, but the biggest thing is um, knowing the field that you're in, as volatile as it, it may be, you know, look out, branch out in different areas don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, and the g- greatest, you know, thing about working in this field is there's so many opportunities. You know? right. um, I believe cybersecurity or IT in general is probably, I think, the most sought out field right now in terms of um uh, engineers, you know, it's it's so lacking right now, man. Yeah. It's not so. saturated. Yeah, contrary yeah. to popular yeah. belief. Yeah, yeah. Get no, it's, it. just, it's just a lot of people rush towards one thing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh wait, that was hot now. <laughs> we gonna run that way. <laughs> but now you mentioned your trainings. Um, how much are they? And yeah, you know, for people who want to join in the future. Yeah, how can they get connected and all that? Yeah. So the training is uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Um, and it's for six months. Um, for me, it's not about the pay at all. Um, you know, I do really well, so I, I don't worry about the, the pay. It's more so to cover my AWS cost. What I get out of it is, you know, people benefit from it, number one. And then number two, for me, uh, as a kickback is that as I train more, I basically, um, I remember a lot more yeah. things. Mm-hmm. I memorize a lot more things and it's, I become better at what yeah. I do. So it's easier for me to talk about and speak about and I grow as an engineer. So I get more so that out of it than, you know, the financial rewards. Um, so it's $2,500 for um, six months. Um, and I guess, I don't know if you guys are going to ask this, but um, 
as far as the pay in cyber or not cyber but Splunk. Um, so with Splunk, around you know <laughs> three hundred thousand. <000. laughs> uh, with Splunk, you can um, you can make uh, depending on how good you are, um, you can make anywhere from like one fifty to two fifty um, uh, if you are a moderately good engineer. Now, if you're a top of line engineer, I've seen folks who are able to make you know one fifty, one seventy five an hour. You know, uh, as a commanding rate. You know, folks have made like seventy to eighty thousand dollars in like two months. Uh, with Splunk, um, and it's it's a matter of how badly the you know the company that you're going to need you. Mm -hmm. Now they will work you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I say that they will work you, but I mean at the end of the day, you know the rewards are great. Um, and the great thing about Splunk is, especially if you have your own company, you can pretty much contract to many different you know um, companies, uh, depending on if they have a non compete or not. But you can contract out, and um, you know like. Uh, if Gerald was saying that those on here, you can have two, three, whatever jobs and make 300, 400, 500,000 uh, very easily. So, yeah, man. Yeah. I want to, you know, put a break on, you know, uh, IT and all that stuff. You know, yeah, I want to know more. Hit the man up and learn, you know what I'm saying? Like, get involved. But, you know, let's talk about the more humanitarian side of your life um, yeah. and go back, you know what I'm saying, to Sierra Leone. Yeah. Uh, yeah man. One of the things that I, you know, fell, fell in love with what you do. I almost said fell in love with you. We just, you know, no homo fell in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I, you know, you were, when I first met you, you were, you know, uh, doing a drive to go back home yeah. and, uh, you know, help the uh, less fortunate. You, you still into that or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, one of the biggest reasons I also got into IT was to be able to do that. My passion, I love IT. You know, you know, it's not just about the money. I love what I do. I love learning. I love challenging myself. But it's about making the money to help out more people. And that's always what I wanted to do. Um, so, I saw that IT gave me that avenue to be able to do that and to be able to do that successfully um, without having to, you know, work, you know, 80, 90 hours per week to be able to, you know, to sustain myself um, and help out. So uh, in terms of what's happening now in Sierra Leone, um, I'm setting up a couple things. So I bought land last year. Bought ah, about, yeah, bye -bye. <laughs> bought uh, about, this guy has done what every <laughs> man is required to do with you. Hey, this guy. Bought that. Congrats, 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 congrats. Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> so I bought um, about 1.5 acres um, uh, back in Sierra Leone. And right now I'm trying to basically clear it out to be able to start building um, a couple of structures. So um, not quite sure yet exactly what field because, you know, one, there's a lot of NGOs there, you know, um, but a lot of NGOs that aren't successful. Mm -hmm. So my thing is um, I want to build something that's going to be successful. Um, and right now what's going to be most successful, at least from what I'm seeing, is a for-profit business that employs people. People need jobs over there. Mm -hmm. Right now there's around 70% of the youth which are unemployed. So my thing is, let me build some type of, you know, factory, something that's going to employ people. Um, so I'm doing some uh, market research still to see what, you know, feasibly, you know, would be best over there. Um, and I got a couple of folks that I'm teamed up with that are really interested in impacting, you know, the country. Right, right, right. Yeah. I know Flex wants to, um, you know, kill the whole technology thing, but just to, <laughs> you know, piggyback on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, not no average person, or let me say average person, but not no person could just wake up and you know, create a, a business that contracts with the government. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of us think about the government contract, we don't like, man, that's a far-fetched dream, you know, yeah. but Kate was on here, you know, she she mentioned it, you mentioned it. Jelani. Yeah, you know, Jelani Consulting mentioned it. You know, it sounds, it sounds attainable. You know, attainable. Yeah. So just for those who, you know, want to attain this goal, just, you know, give a little bit of, you know, um, 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 help, you know, guidance, guidance, yeah, a little bit of guidance yeah. to how, you know, you got started or how they could get started and what they need to do. There, uh, There's over, I want to say half a billion um, or half a trillion dollars worth of contracts that go out, like, you know, to different contractors. So it doesn't necessarily even need to be in the IT space. You know, I know we're focused on IT right now, but mm -hmm. um, there's contracts for like, you know, uh, providing paper, <laughs> paper clips, pencils, and things like that to, you know, different agencies. Picking up trash. Yeah, picking up trash. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that you can do with the government. Um, number one, you got to do your research, you know. Um, do your research in terms of the area that um, <clears throat> there's need. Um, and then once you find those areas, um, don't try to go, uh, don't try to do it by yourself. Don't try to go at it alone. 
work with others who've done, you know, uh, contracting before, ask questions. Um, there are many different, you know, small businesses around here that contract with the, the government. You can easily just go walk and say, I would like to talk to X, Y, and Z. I just want to find out information. Some people would, you know, shun you, but for the most part, they're very welcoming. At least that's been my experience. Um, so as I was pursuing contracting, I started talking to um, different folks who've already done it. Um, some who are doing like, you know, millions of dollars and others who are doing 20, 30 K. Um, and I mean, those add up, you know, very easily. Um, so as I was talking to them, they were just saying, Hey, um, just get the paperwork there. Just, just start the paperwork process. And then, um, once you get registered, um, understand that you still have to grind. You still have to, um, make sure that you put yourself out there, that you're not just, um, you know, sitting and just waiting for the contracts. It's mm -hmm. just not going to come every, a lot of people competing. Um, so while doing that, the other thing that I also understood with the research portion is the, you know, my, uh, I don't know how to call it, but, um, the benefits that I got, I'm a veteran. Um, my wife is African-American, um, uh, we're minorities. Um, uh, she's a woman. <laughs> so use those things to your benefit. Black um, privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Use those things Amen. to your benefit. Um, because there's certain, um, hierarchy in terms of contracting that the mm -hmm. government has you know you have uh i think 100 percent disabled then you have woman don't you have minority mm -hmm. and then you have uh just small business in general uh there's so many different factors that that come into play way through there and it's not just me there's many <laughs> most of these top agencies they just have people who are just like face fronts they're just pundits mm -hmm. you know for the companies they're just sitting there, you know, got this old uh, military guy, the general that doesn't do anything for the company. It's just the face of the company. He may say two or three words, but he's getting paid, uh, you know, two million dollars while the company's making half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, that's look at those strategies and try to um, replicate those as much as you can. And that's essentially what I did. Yeah, man. So. It's been one heck of an episode man <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it's a it's a it's, it's a lot to go back and rewatch and you know relearn and yeah uh, yeah man listen how can people get in contact with you you know what i'm saying to find out personally about how they can get involved with Sierra Leone and also you know what I'm saying, to start a jump start a career in aws and splunk yeah oit sure um so my email is um sar s-a-h-r dot levy at openpathus.com uh, that's the best way to get in contact with me. I typically, you know, respond back within 24 hours. Um, number wise, um, I do have a number, but uh, we're actually going to change it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't want to give you a number. You call say, hey. <laughs> 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 what's <it> happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, just contact me through email and then I'll, I'll call you. The other number is my cell and I don't just, you know, like to broadcast my cell. That man is a family. Man. Keep, <laughs> keep some things private. You know? <laughs> um but yeah, uh, contact me through emails is best. Um, and if you're interested in either the internship or, you know, even teaching, like if you have different skills that you would like to teach in IT, I'm definitely looking to partner. Um, and then maybe possibly also partner in terms of contracting. No, oh, wow. So. Hey, yeah. man. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Don't say you didn't hear the man, though. Yeah, man. Don't hey. say you didn't hear the man. Appreciate, I'm glad we made this happen, bro. You yeah, know what I mean? And to everybody out there, you know what I'm saying? That email is sitmpodcast237 at gmail.com if you want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, come through or you know somebody want to come through. My man did it. He hit me on a text, though, because we got a relationship. And yeah, here we are. Bro, it's been a heck of a conversation, yeah, like man. my man Ike has said. And uh, definitely come back, you know what I'm saying? Give us an update on Open Path LLC and uh, what you got going on back home in Syria. Definitely. definitely yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this episode was sponsored in partnership with Perfect Office Solution, yeah, providing office space or entrepreneurs in the DMV area. Hit them up. <coughs> Losing my voice, please, people help me. Bring my time. <laughs> Let them know we sent you. SITM Podcast is the promo code. You get 10% off your uh, your uh, monthly, lease. monthly lease. Yeah, AK, bro. Let them know how they can reach us. Yeah, man. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, man. Yeah, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like I said, man, hey, our guests come on here. You know, they share a lot of nuggets. They don't really have to, but they do, you know, for the masses. For so, the yeah, free. For free, too. You know, hey, subscribe to our YouTube channel at SITM Podcast. Follow us on all social platforms at SITM Podcast. Um, yeah, like we said, the email is SITMPodcast237 at gmail.com. Email us with questions, concerns, referrals. 
Man, even comment, man. Tell us, yo, our feet don't look right. It don't matter. We just want to hear from you. So, yeah, man. <laughs> I like those shoes, though. <laughs> hey, man, you know, how, you, know, you know how I do. Anyways, <laughs> hey, the Stuck Middle Podcast. Hey, we are out. Yes, sir. Cool, man.